Hi everyone, this is Mr. Spinelli, and welcome to our first Wordmasters Challenge video of the year. This is a analogies based challenge that every two or three months or so we get a, a list of I'd say 25 words and we split up the words into two separate columns, words 1 through 12, words 13 through 25. We learn the words really well including parts of speech, definition, how they're used, different forms of the word, and then we take an analogies based challenge. There are also quizzes after each set of words. So for example, we'll be having a quiz soon on words 1 through 12. This video is meant uh, as an opportunity for me to teach you about the words and how they're used and maybe help you make some connections to your own life. As the video is going, you need to pause after each word and create a flashcard that has the word in the front, the parts of speech, definition, and connection, which could be a sentence or any example, on the back. Look at the connection as anything that's going to help you remember the word. Um, in order to get credit for the assignment and to avoid the dreaded homework club, you must have all of those parts complete with all 12 words by Thursday, November 1st, which is coming up pretty soon. Um, so let's begin. The first word we're going to look at is quarry. And quarry um, is both a noun and a verb, okay? And the noun versions of quarry. Are, uh, it is a pit that is used to excavate or dig up stone or slate, or it's any large amount of a supply. For example, during Halloween, I like to have a quarry of Reese's around me at all times. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the show The Middle, you know that Mike, the dad, he is the kind of boss at the quarry. And actually, here's a picture of his son Axel wearing a hard hat as they head into the quarry. The verb of quarry is to obtain or get something through hard work. For example, many of you um, spend lots of hours outside of school quarrying over at the football field or over at the soccer field to get better. Or some of you, when you get to college, will probably be quarrying at the library, as this girl is here, to obtain or get something through hard work. Veer. Now you've probably heard this word before, and veer is a verb, and it means to change the direction or course of. So for example, you may see in directions or your GPS may say veer to the right or veer to the left, and that just means just slightly change your course, as shown by this image. Here you can tell by the, the yellow sign indicating that you're going to veer to the light slightly. Uh, slightly. The other way you can use veer is to change the direction of a conversation. So for example, in this picture, this girl may want to consider veering the conversation away to whatever she did wrong. So again, veer means to change the direction or course of, and it can mean either physically the direction of the way something is moving or the topic of a conversation. Scathing. You've probably um, seen this uh, word as, before as well, and it's an adjective. And as an adjective, it means harsh, critical, or painful. You may um, have get, get scathing comments from your parents if you forget to take out the trash. Uh, an example I think of when I think of scathing is actually the current um, senatorial race going on between um, the current Senator Scott Brown and Elizabeth Warren. They have both thrown some pretty scathing remarks out there about each other's character and each other's ability to do the job. And here's a great example that kind of makes me laugh of some scathing remarks on somebody's paper. You see they got a zero. The teacher wants to know if they're crazy and that they should see them. So again, kind of harsh, really critical, and kind of hurtful remarks would be scathing. An edifice, another word you've probably heard before, and an edifice is a noun, and it's a building, especially one of large size. Parker would be considered an edifice, the Empire State Building, the Prudential Center in Boston, they're all edifices, and here's an example of one right here. So an edifice is just another name for um, a, a large kind of intimidating building. Germinate. Germinate is actually kind of a, a scientific word, and it basically, it is a verb, and it means to create or produce. So for example, when the cavemen were first roaming the earth, they germinated fire by rubbing two sticks together. 
Um, germinate is also used a lot in science. Mr. Mack may be talking to you guys later about germination, which is where a, a seed is planted in the process of producing a flower or a plant or a vegetable. So that's germinate. Again, it's a verb. Make sure that you're pausing after everyone to copy down this information. Ponderous. Ponderous is a really great descriptive word that um, you may want to consider using in your writing, uh, especially when we start writing our narratives later in the year. And ponderous is an adjective. It has two meanings. The first is of great weight or heavy. Something that's ponderous is really heavy, hard to control. Um, it also means awkward or uncomfortable to carry. Um, if you've ever moved, you've ever seen mom or dad trying to get that really awkward bookshelf down the stairs, that's really ponderous. And an example that I can think of from the work that we'll be doing soon is in The Christmas Carol, when Scrooge is first visited by the ghost of Jacob Marley. Marley describes his chains that cover his body as very ponderous. So as you can see, the chains here, they're, they're of great weight, they're heavy, but that they're also uncomfortable to carry. Think about ponderous too as like a burden. Like if you know a secret that you can't tell anybody or if you know that you did something wrong and you haven't fessed up to it yet, that might be ponderous. That might be a burden for you to carry with you. Orator. Another word you've probably heard used before, but an orator is a noun and basically a public speaker, especially someone who's really good. They speak with a lot of expression, they speak with fluency, they're very entertaining or motivating, and um, no matter what people may say about his politics or his decisions, pretty much everybody, whether Republican, Democrat, Independent, acknowledges that President Obama is a great orator. Um, he's very good at presenting his ideas, and he's very good at giving public speeches. Other notable orators, as far as presidents go, John F. Kennedy um, and Abe Lincoln, also uh, FDR, were great orators and great um, kind of givers of speeches. Billow. Billow is both a noun and a verb, and you've probably, again, heard this one before. The noun version is a great wave or surge. Now, it can actually mean like waves on an ocean, but it can also mean um, um, something such as smoke. So you can see here billows of smoke coming out of chimneys. And as a verb, it means to swell or puff up. And the example given here is the flag billowed in the wind. So again, billowed is kind of like a surge of um, something moving in a, in a particular way. And it's both a noun and a verb. Especially important to notice when words have more than one part of speech in the word master's challenge. Mandatory. Mandatory, you've probably heard before that it's not an option, it is mandatory. Much like going to homework club if you don't do your homework. Um, it is mandatory. And so when something's mandatory, first of all, it's an adjective. And second of all, there is no option. It's a command or obligation. You must do something. For instance, if you want to get your license, it's a mandatory process that you go through driving school. In addition, like I said before, it's mandatory that you go to homework club. Otherwise, you're going to face another consequence. Tycoon. When you think of tycoon, this may maybe, maybe you guys don't know this game. Maybe this will make me feel a little dated. But when I think of the word tycoon, I think of roller coaster tycoon, um, and it's because tycoon is a noun, and it's basically a person of great wealth and power. Um, and I think of roller coaster tycoon because in the game you were kind of the boss, and you had to make your own roller coasters and run your own amusement parks and you had a lot of wealth and power. The other example I can think of is in A Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge, the main character, um, is a tycoon. He is a person in the banking industry who has great wealth and power. And here he's, in the Disney version, he's portrayed by um, Donald Duck. And you can see him with all of his money around him. Convey is another one, and again, you're probably noticing that a lot of these words are words that you've heard before, and that's a really good thing, because we want you to be able to use these words in a meaningful way, not just remember them for some quiz. Um, it is a verb. The first definition 
is to carry or move from one place to another. You've probably heard about a conveyor belt before. If you haven't, here's an example of one. And it, the whole purpose of a conveyor belt is to literally move one uh, something from one spot to the next. And that's what it means. So you, you convey something. When you move, you convey your materials from one house to your new house. The other um, term it's used, again as a verb, is to communicate or make known. So for example, when we recently got news that we wouldn't have school because of Hurricane Sandy, Superintendent Doherty conveyed the message through phone, through email, through headline. And here's an example of a teacher conveying a certain concept to his students. Our last word is acrid. An acrid is an adjective, but it can be used in two very different ways. The first is that it can be sharp or bitter in taste and smell. So for example, um, certain cheeses, even certain like red wines, have a very acrid taste to them. And sometimes it's a good thing, and sometimes, in the case of this guy, it doesn't look like it's a very good thing. The other way to use acrid, and again, acrid is a great word when we start using descriptive language within our own narrative writing. Another way to use acrid is extremely stinging or bitter. And that means in the remarks you make or the comments. For example, earlier we referenced Senator War, um, Brown and Elizabeth Warren and their kind of scathing remarks. Acrid has a similar feel to it. They're kind of really nasty, bitter comments. Um, and I'll give you an example here. It looks like this couple may have said one too many acrid comments to one another. I hope this video has helped to give you a sense of what the words are, what they mean, and how you may use them in your own vocabulary. Um, a reminder that you should have paused each time and had the flashcards ready. If you've done that, you're all set. Make sure your flashcards have the word. Every part of speech, remember some words have more than one, the definitions, and a connection. It could be an example, it could be a sentence, whatever's going to help you remember the word. The quiz for words 1 through 12 will be Wednesday the 14th. So you have about two weeks to get really comfortable with these words. We'll be doing a little work with them in class, but a lot of it's going to fall on you at home to make sure you're prepared. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, this video is here for you to access all the time, especially when studying for the quiz. Um, enjoy the rest of your day off and stay safe, everyone. Bye.